Welcome to Hunger Day. Uh, <laughs> we've been working on something for two years that we can't wait to share with you today. So in June of this year, we announced our decision to switch certification bases from EASA CS23 to EASA CS25. We shared at the time that this would be the most significant design update to our aircraft since we started this company. So you can understand we've been waiting for this moment for quite some time. But uh, now the moment has come to show you all uh, what it is that we've been working on. Are you ready to see it? Here it is. The ES-30 is the culmination of all of our engineering efforts through the last years, and it's been designed with input from airlines all over the world. So we believe deeply that in order to start this green transition as soon as possible, we need to design an aircraft that just works for airlines, that works profitably with their existing infrastructure using their existing business model. So, Let's look inside this plane. The ES-30 seats 30 passengers in a 2 plus 1 seating configuration with a generous 30-inch pitch. It features a fully pressurized cabin with a standing aisle and overhead bins for your small carry-ons. And in the back, we have the cargo bay and the ES-30 is designed for the industry standard of 25 kilos luggage per passenger. We've even included an option of a galley and a lavatory in the front of the aircraft. From a technology perspective, this aircraft is unlike any other regional aircraft. So it features a full glass cockpit, all digital system, and a digital fly-by-wire that allows the ES-30 to operate in every weather condition, including in low visibility. It can also operate in every climate and features the state-of-the-art electro-expulsive de-icing system so that we can fly into known icing. And this technology is purely electric, it's low energy, it's durable, it's scalable, and the ES-30 will be the first passenger aircraft applying it on its main wing. As you may have guessed, we have now have the batteries in this landing gear fairing underneath the aircraft. And we've added a strut to help with the structural load of this battery. This battery, in turn, feeds energy to the four electric motors that's on the main wing. And for almost all cases, this is all you need to know. But for that reassurance and for dealing with the reserve issue, we've added two turbo generators in the rear of the aircraft. These are not on. They're just there so that if you need that extended range, if you're, for instance, being redirected to another airport, you can switch the systems on. And fuel tanks containing sustainable aviation fuel located in the wing will feed the turbo generators, which generates energy and feeds the electric system, giving the ES-30 a much longer range. We call this a reserve hybrid system. So let's speak a little bit about range. So we've designed the ES-30 for a 200-kilometer 
all electric range. Why 200 kilometers? Well, we believe that that's where the early market is for the size of planes. And actually, it has to do with supply and demand. We think that there's more aircraft flying these routes all electrically than we can ramp up production in the early years. But it's so important for the market logistics, for the route flexibility and the future planning of airlines to be able to also fly further when needed. So when we kick in the turbo generator, we can fly a lot further. And if we fly 400 kilometers, we still have a 50% reduction in emission compared to a similar turboprop. Even if most of these planes are flying with sustainable aviation fuel, which the ES-30 will do. So compared to the ES-19, the ES-30 seats 30 passengers. And this is an increase with more than 50%. And what's even more impressive is that we've increased the luggage capacity of a factor two and a half. And it goes maybe without saying that we're no longer doing the ES-19 and we're focusing all of our attention on the ES-30. But we still have the proposition of being electric. This is not just a green aircraft, but it's something that's more affordable. And we believe that this aircraft can compete with much larger 50-seat turboprop aircraft. And this is a, something that will continue to evolve. As batteries uh, not only increase in energy density, but also get lower in price. As the price of CO2 and jet fuel increases, the economic proposition will be even greater. But the ES-30 is not a conventional aircraft, so we can't make comparisons. Uh, we can just, just make comparison with traditional planes because it's an electric aircraft. It's low noise, it has silent taxi, it has no local pollution. Even if we turn on the turbo generator, we don't do that at takeoff and landing. And it can operate on a short runway, which means that we're not just redefining the experience of being inside of the plane, but also the experience of the airports. That's the ES-30. It's green, it's affordable, and it's accessible. And it will enter into commercial service in 2028. Thanks, Anders. Ladies and gentlemen, our goal with the ES-30 is to make electric aircraft a reality as soon as possible. Building models that you can touch, feel, and interface with will bring us a much deeper understanding of how everything is working together. For the ES-30, we had a clear vision of building a fully integrated test facility. We call it the ITF. What you see on this picture is a computer model of how we imagined the ITF will look like. And what I will show you next is a photograph we took this Tuesday of the ITF. And this is Hangar Next Door. With this, we have essentially built an entire aircraft on ground. We can already touch and feel and even fly this aircraft. Instead of working in isolated areas, we are all working together in the same and representative environment, which means we learn from each other and we save both money and time. And to show you how this looks like, we have made a little video. Three, two, one, release. Right, release. Here, we will perform the full integrated test of the ITF, the integrated test facility. The idea is to test uh, all the systems that are now integrated, like flight controls, avionics, motors, and other systems, together in a flight. So all the systems will be exercised at the same time. Are you feeling optimistic about the test so far? Oh yeah, for sure. It's gonna work. <laughs> right aileron surfaces moves up. Now move the pedal to the right. Nice. nice. <laughs> We're going to test the four motors, two on each side. We're going to power up and look at uh, how it's going to interact with the flight simulator. Engine four to max power. Okay, engine four to max. Engine three. Engine two. All four motors running. Congratulations, team. 
it's very exciting for our engineers, right? Because this is a mock-up of the real product. So it's been good to leave your computer, leave your desk and come here to the hangar and seeing how your system, all the things that you have developed is working. Okay, so leveling off, we'll just do a check of the flight controls again. Power is coming back to max continuous. Power back to max continuous and leveling off 14,000 feet. We are not only building the ITF, but it's a kind of bonding with other teams because you, you could see people helping each other, many volunteers. It's a great experience. Brakes on. Brakes on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manvetta, where the local time is lunchtime. In order to progress, we can't be flying solo. We need partners, partners who share our vision, partners who are passionate about making change, and partners who will help to ensure that we bring to market aircraft that are sustainable, affordable, and accessible. And you know what? We found them. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Kirby, CEO of United Airlines. From the beginning, Hart and United have been on the same page with an acute focus on safety, reliability, and sustainability. In fact, United is on track to purchase 100 of Hart's ES-30 airliners, which will mark the world's first electric short-haul fleet aircraft in history. Thank you to the entire Hart team for your commitment to innovative technology and your tireless efforts in support of a more sustainable and connected world. Hopefully, someday all airlines around the world will join us in the age of electric aircraft. So ladies and gentlemen, as chairman of Air Canada, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to uh, be here today, coinciding with the announcement that we're uh, placing this purchase order for 30 years, 30s, uh, and taking also, uh, as was said, a mi minority uh, stake. We need technology, we need new propulsion, we need uh, thought uh, leadership uh, technology, and this is what we find that HART provides. And this is why we're so proud to be able to partner up with Hart and uh, support the Hart team uh, through their journey. Uh, thanks for the partnership. Looking forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. I believe that when electric aviation reaches its full potential, uh, then I'm sure that we can, as a national provider, that we are national carrier, we can increase the availability in Sweden significantly. So we are really happy for the collaboration with HART. We are really proud to be able to walk beside you during these really exciting times. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our bold ambition is to have the correspondence of roughly the domestic size of Sweden, Norway, and Denmark in fossil-free fuels by 2030. That's already massive. We're not gonna get there just with sustainable aviation fuel. What we need to have is that new generation of technology. You carry that dream of that future generation because we know how beautiful travel is and how connecting the world and businesses and people is extremely vital for us as almost a planet. So please, pass that on to the next generations, and we are very proud to be with you, not only today, but hopefully also in the future. Thank you very much. We're delighted to have assembled this fantastic group that we're calling the Heart Partners, who are all gonna help us as we journey along with the design and the development of the ES-30 from now all the way to entry into service and beyond. And ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Thank you so much for inviting Air e New Zealand to be on the advisory board. We're absolutely thrilled to be able to contribute to the debate that the industry actually needs and the provocation that, uh, that needs to come, not only from the airlines, uh, from the, uh, the industry, but also the customer. 
the customer is king and it's what they in actual fact want and in fact the community is demanding and that is sustainable air travel going into the future. We're delighted to be on the panel and we're looking forward to our, to our contribution. So on behalf of Air New Zealand and the New Zealand contingent here, can I wish you every success in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks so much. At Heart Aerospace, our vision is not only to build an electric aircraft. Our vision is to build a new industry. And Sweden is right now leading in building green industries. Here is something that we just don't talk about. We see it everywhere around us. Everything from the steel industry to the battery manufacturing, and maybe most important, the electric mobility. And still today, we have the largest aviation industry in the world per capita. And this is largely thanks to one company that stands out. And that's Saab. <laughs> Saab has shown that a small country like Sweden can successfully build airplanes. It makes a lot of sense for us to work together. So that's why we are very happy today to say that we have entered into a collaboration with Saab. Saab has also decided, which we are very proud and happy about, that they will take a minority shareholder stake in Heart Aerospace. <laughs> here at Sava, this is where it all started for Heart Aerospace. We've been here for a couple of years and we're really starting to grow out of these facilities. We need a new place where we can uh, grow and where we can industrialize this project. We need a new headquarter where we can design our aircraft. We need a new final assembly hall where we can build our aircraft, and we need a new flight test center where we can test our aircraft. And today, we're very excited. We will announce the new name of this campus. We will call it the Northern Runway. And what is the timeline for this? Well, in 24, we will move into our new headquarter. The same time, our new fl flight test hangar will be ready for us, where we will put together and build our three prototypes. In 26, when we move into our flight test campaign, Gateway Save will be a fully operational airport with a full length runway of two kilometers. In 27, when we start our mass production, we will do so in our brand new final assembly hall, and in 28, when we move into the entering into service, we will receive our customers in our new delivery uh, center. Today, we are very thankful to Castellum and Göteborg City for making this a reality with us. We're so happy about this partnership. And we are very excited about the future and committed to decarbonize air travel before the end of this decade. Thank you. That's it for today. So thank you all for coming today. <laughs>